Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, but now and forever and the ages of ages. Amen. Amen.
Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, and all those who have served you today, and all the saints that have given ourselves and were not in our whole life to Christ our God. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, to the ages of ages. And I partake of the 
wisdom let us be attentive. In those days, says the Lord, I'll gather her that is brought through, and her that has been driven out, and I will receive, and those to whom I have driven out, and her that has been bruised, I will make into a remnant, and her that has been cut, cast out into a strong nation, and the Lord will reign over them in Mount Zion from, the, from this henceforth and forevermore. Thus says the Lord, and you, Bethlehem, house of Ephrathah, and not least among the thousands of Judah, for, of, for from you there will come forth for me the one who is to be a ruler in Israel, and his goings out are from the beginning, from eternity. Because of this, he will give them a certain moment that she who bears the child shall bring forth bring, bring to birth, and the remainder of his brethren will return to the children of Israel, and he will stand and will see and the shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, and they will abide in the glory of, in the name of the Lord, for now they will be magnified even to, to the extremes of the earth. Speak with me, O Lord, in the day when heaven proclaim you to all, using the star as its mouth, O Savior, and it brought you man to worship you in faith, with them have mercy on us. The salvations are in the holy mountain, the Lord loved the gates of Zion, more than all the tabernacles of Jacob.
child shall lead them. The ox and the bear shall be together. Their young sh shall be together. And the lion shall be strong like the ox. And again, the child shall put his hand and goes all backs. And the weaned child in his hand and the rest of them. Yes, of the offspring of the ass. They shall not hurt or be able to destroy any, anyone from my holy mountain. For the whole earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as much water covers the sea. And the day that shall be the root of Jesse, and that shall rise to the whole nation. And him shall the nation hope, and his rest shall be in all. Greetings from the prophecy of Jeremiah. Wisdom, let us be attentive. This is our God, and there shall be none other reckoned in comparison to him. He has found all of all the way of knowledge and given it to Jacob, his servant, and Israel, his beloved. After this, he appeared on earth and lived among men. This is the book of the commandments of God and the law which exists forever. All those who keep it fast will have life, and those who abandon it will die. Turn back to Jacob and lay hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light to be illumined. Do not give your glory to another, and what is profitable to you to a foreign nation. The reading is from the prophecy of Daniel. Wisdom, let us be attentive. Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, You saw, O king, and behold, a great image. This image, mighty and of exceeding brightness, stood before you, and its appearance was lightning. The head of this image was of pure gold, its hands, breasts, and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet partly of iron and partly of clay. As you looked, a stone was cut out from a mountain by no human hand, and it smote the image on its feet of iron and clay, and broke them in pieces. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold, all together were broken in pieces, and became the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away, so that not a trace of them could be found. But the stone that struck the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. This was the dream. Now we will tell the king its interpretation. The God of heaven will set up a kingdom that shall never be destroyed, nor shall this kingdom be left to another people. It shall crush all these kingdoms and bring them to an end, and it shall stand forever. Just as you saw that a stone was cut from the mountain, not by hands, and that it crushed the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has informed the king what shall be hereafter. The dream is certain, and its interpretation trustworthy. You have
Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, and now forever to the ages of ages. Amen. You have gone from the Virgin, no Christ, spiritual Son of justice. And the star shows you who nothing can contain, contain in the cave. You led mad back to worship your face. With them we magnify you, giver of thy glory.
law of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with all but with the oil of gladness and beyond all, all your beyond your comrades. And you, Lord, founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will grow old like a garment, like a like the man, like a mantle. You will roll them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will never end. But to what the angel has he ever said? Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a stool for your feet. And they they not all ministering spirits and set forth to serve for the sake of those who are to obtain salvation. Therefore, we must pay closer attention to what we have heard, lest we turn away from it. For the message of a uh, message declared by the angel was valid, and every transgression of the or disobedience received in just retribution. How shall we escape if we, uh, if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord. Keeping 
watch over their flock by night, and an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. As it had been told. which was weakened and distorted after the fall. 
Only the most illumined people could perceive, even before the time of Christ, the value of the human person and the response to the psalmist's question, what is man that God will remember him? Which they proclaimed in the psalmist's words, you have made man a little lower than the angels, you have crowned him with glory and honor. It is this supreme value of the human person that the divine human Lord revealed. And since that time, we each year have heard repeated declarations on the same subject by states, governments, and social groups, as well as international treaties about respecting the human person and human rights. We witness with great surprise the constant repeated drama of Bethlehem. It is a drama because it is no longer a joyous event when we ignore the Son and Word of God born in a manger, when humanity is, when humanity as its creation is not re respected as a divine image. Our Holy Orthodox Church and its theology teach us that humanity and the human body deserve the utmost respect because they were united to God in our incarnate Lord. Therefore, all of us are obliged to intensify our efforts for the supreme value of the human person to be respected by everyone. It is with great sorrow and deep regret that the ecumenical patriarch follows the ongoing and increasing waves of violence and brutality which continue to plague the various regions of our planet and especially the entire Middle East and in the native Christians there often in the name of religion. We will never cease to declare to all from the sacred center of orthodoxy to our brother primates of the Orthodox and other Christian churches, the leaders and representatives of other religions, the heads of states, and every person of goodwill everywhere, but above all to our fellow human beings, that whatever motive, whether motivated or not by others, place their own lives at risk in order to deprive others of their lives, for they too are created by God, that there can be no form of true and genuine religiosity or spirituality without love toward the human person. Any ideological, social, or religious expression that either despises humanity created in the image of God or else teaches that the, and permits the death of our fellow human beings, especially in the savage and primitive ways that we see, surely has nothing to do with the love of God. Dear brothers and sisters, as we turn our attention to the situation prevailing in our world today, world today we condemn the tragic events stemming from hatred of other religions and en enmity toward people, which we witness so frightfully close to us as we hear and see the terrorists so readily through social media. In response, we offer, as the only powerful antidote to the contemporary violence, the ultimate poverty of God, which always acts as love, and which, we, and which surprised the wise men in the entire world. This is the mystical power of God, the mystical power of the Orthodox Church, the mystical power of the Christian faith. This is the power that conquers and overcomes every form of violence and evil through love. This is our humble assessment of the world affairs this Christmas. We pray that everyone may experience the joy of utmost respect for the human person of our fellow human being. We also pray for the, for the stopping of every form of violence, which can only be overcome, which can only be overcome through the love and promoted and provided by the angel of great counsel, the Prince of Peace, our Savior Christ. By the grace, boundless, mercy, and goodwill of the newly born and incarnate Lord of glory, peace and love be with you all, your fervent supplicant before the before the Lord Bartholomew, Archbishop of Constantinople, New Rome, and Ecumenical Patriarch. I will read the encyclical of Archbishop Demetrius at this time. <clears throat> Beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, this holy and blessed feast of the Nativity of our Lord is very joyous, is a very joyous day that brings us together in worship and praise of our Creator and Redeemer. Today the eternal God enters our humanity for deliverance from sin, evil, and death. Today the infinite wisdom of God is revealed in the birth of the Savior 
and the truth of his divine will is made known. Today, an enduring promise of peace is established by an infant who is the Prince of Peace and whose name Emmanuel means God with us. On this day, his great love for us is shown as the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ is a revelation of truth. Today, the brilliance of divine wisdom, the glory of the Lord, and the hope of the gospel of salvation are revealed. The ancient promise made to Adam and Eve, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to so many others is fulfilled. All that was foretold by the prophets has happened. God has become man so that we can be redeemed and restored to blessed communion and abundant life with Him. The Incarnation is also a revelation of true and eternal peace. Through the birth of Christ, the path of our reconciliation with God is visible. The turmoil caused by sin and despair is met with the calm of the coming of the Prince of Peace. The Theotokos and Joseph find comfort in the eyes of the infant Lord. The shepherds hear the holy angels proclaim peace on the Magi find assurance in the miraculous sign that leads them to Bethlehem and to the one who fulfills all things. The incarnation of Christ is a revelation of love. In, the offering, in, in offering himself for our sakes, he becomes the greatest gift. The light of grace reveals God's compassion for his creation, and the power of grace visible in the child affirms that healing has come. In the newness of life, he has come to lead us from death to life. In the beauty of a child, not, not by overwhelming force or temporal might, the power of God's love for us brings unspeakable joy and unquenchable hope. Our celebration on this glorious feast of the Nativity affirms this revelation and offers a witness of its power in our lives. Our worship and praise of the Incarnate Lord offers a brilliant witness of truth in a world filled with confusion and deception. Into the darkness and hopelessness that, that many have found, we proclaim the divine wisdom that guides us to the meaning of our existence and to the true life for which we have been created. Our hearts are filled with peace, which we share with others, for our hope has been renewed by the trust of God. We live in the assurance of eternal blessings, and we invite others to come and see all that he has done for us. Finally, our gatherings in parishes and homes each day and every moment of our lives are filled with his love. As he revealed his great love for us in the birth of our Lord, we reveal divine grace through our faith, our acts of kindness and service, and our generosity to others, especially those in need. Our compassion, which leads us to give glory to God in the highest, will lead others to the King of Kings to our Savior, who is Christ the Lord. May you and your communities and families be filled with joy and peace on this blessed feast as you celebrate the revelation of God and the birth of Christ. While you live in the midst of tremendous challenges and needs, may you also affirm that you live in the presence of our Lord, who guides you in sharing the grace and truth that will lead others to Him into abundance of life. With paternal love in Christ, the Nephites, Archbishop of America. Please, we ask you to rise as we continue our divine liturgy. Strengthen us for this service with the power of your Holy Spirit and grant speech to our lips 
that we may invoke the grace of the Holy Spirit upon the gifts that are about to be offered. I grant that always guarded by your power, we may give glory to you, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, but now and forever, and to the ages of ages.
let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. Remembering 
his sacred passion, life in the cross, his three day burial, resurrection from the dead, his ascension into the heavens, and the throne at your right hand, God the Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. We offer to you these gifts for all of your own gifts in all and for all. Das I con son is in prosperum man, Canta Panda, Kedia Panda. Therefore, most holy master, we also, your sinful and unworthy servants, whom you have made worthy to serve in your only altar, not because of our own righteousness, for we have not done anything good upon the earth. And because of your mercy and compassion, which you have so richly poured out upon us, we dare to approach your holy altar and bring forth the symbols of the most holy body and blood of your Christ. We pray to you and call upon you, O holy of holies, that by the favor of your goodness, your Holy Spirit may come upon us and upon these gifts you presented to bless, <coughs> sanctify, and make this bread to be the most precious body of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And this cup to be the most precious blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Shed for the life and the salvation of the world.
salvation, Christ is from God, through the intercession of his Father, so if your mother, by the power of the precious life of your cross, and the protection of the body of God for heaven, supplicate the glorious prophet and for the Baptist, all the Holy Glory. Sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and Gabriel came to her and said, Hail, most highly favored one, the Lord is with thee. But she was greatly troubled at the saying, and wondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then said to her, Mary, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. 
you will conceive and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How shall this be, since I have no husband? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. For behold, your Aunt Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived. This is the sixth month for her, who is thought not able to have children. But with God, everything is possible. Then Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaiden of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed her. In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first such a moment when Cornelius was governor of Syria, and all the people went to be enrolled, each to his own city. Joseph went from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was with the house of the lineage of David. There he enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was a child.
came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? We have seen his star in the east, and we have come to worship him. Then King Herod assembled all of the chief priests and scribes of his people, and inquired of them where the Christ is born, to be born. There they told him, they told him Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet, who said, And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, from, for from you shall come a ruler who will govern my people of Israel.
in, uh, in church, you saw a couple people, I don't know if you saw the rest of us, we were doing this. This is, uh, this is sign language clapping. Doesn't make any noise. So we were very proud of our children uh, who have offered us uh, such a remembrance, a wonderful remembrance of the, uh, of the wonderful remembrance of the joy of Christmas. Uh, we also, as is normal, offer a few more um, hymns by our choir who has chanted, but of, of course the Kalanda, and I'm not sure what else they have for us this evening, but if, just in case that's all there is, then please join us together as we chant and sing the Kalanda uh, for, for Christmas today. Feel free to come forward to receive your blessing. 